Now we're shooting this video on uh, May 16th, and it's getting close to that time where people start thinking, man, we can't plant any switchgrass anymore. And I want to go through the ultimate late drop dead date that you can plant switchgrass, and it's a lot later than you think. And first I'll discuss this area right here, which just like that area up there. You can see the grass, how thick it is, and a little bit of briars. So what we did is in the spring, we actually sprayed this with Simazine. But the Simazine step is not as important as a lot of people think. It's one of the steps, but I'd call it third in the order of spraying. First is spraying this with 2,4-D and Roundup, one pint per acre of 2,4-D, two quarts per acre of glyphosate. So we've actually done that. You can see this whole strip. We're putting a switchgrass edge. It actually goes around the corner for another 150 yards. And what that does is screens off over here. We actually have a hedgerow and then there's a food plot right in there. So we wanna be able to access out here. We have switchgrass, hedgerow, a little bit of switchgrass there. So by the time you get into that, into that trail on the inside or that food plot in the inside, there's just absolutely no way a deer can see us that's down in the food plot in there. So really important, that's the location. So that first spraying, Simazine, fairly important. But the next spraying, the 240 and Roundup, you can see what it did. You can see the difference between here and there. And uh, the 240 is important because there's a lot of stubborn broadleafs in here, including clover, that we need to kill. And it's very resistant. A lot of those plants are very resistant to the uh, glyphosate that we're putting on here. Glyphosate is basically the weakest herbicide you can spray. And then that 2,4-D is pretty strong, but that's a, that attacks broadly. So that's po they're both post-emergence, meaning this has to start greening up. So when this starts greening up, you're spraying it. So we were spraying this about two and a half weeks ago, right around there, so towards the end of April, beginning of May, right around there. So once this was sprayed, we're gonna wait another two weeks. And you can see there's a little bit of green here and there uh, popping up. So we get a late emergence with some of these broad leaves. Might even get some late emergence with some of the grass here. So that's where that second spraying comes in. You want that about four weeks after. Where does that put us though? That puts us into the end of May, right around there. So in another couple weeks, we'll hit this again, and then we'll wait about seven days to let that 240 get out of the soil or close to getting out of the soil, even 10 days. And then we'll broadcast our switch grass. That'll be early June. Now I planted switch grass as late as late June. If you get plenty of moisture, that seed will take hold. We have to eliminate weed competition and that's what we've done. However, you can't use switchgrass as a high hard seed percentage count. What that does for you is it has to go through frost and freeze in order for you to be viable for germination. And that means it needs to wait till next winter. In between time, you don't get a cover of switchgrass to smother weeds out and grow and take hold before weeds take hold. And because weeds are always coming back, doesn't matter how much you spray it or till it. The weeds take hold, you just have sparse switchgrass. That switchgrass doesn't stand a chance except for repeated sprayings of quinchloric and mowing and taking care of it for a few years for it to bounce back. The bottom line is just do it right the first time, use soft seed. Our, our soft seed count is about 80% and we have 90% germination, so very high soft seed count. And that means that seed's available for germination right away. You get good moisture, about 10 days of rain off and on, Keep that seed damp on top of the soil and it'll germinate right away and we get a good covering. So, hey, thanks for watching the video and we'll be right back, but this is very important. It's a very important announcement. We have our Camp Kicking Bear event. We have it on Father's Day. It's more of a habitat day. We're gonna see a feature of habitat improvements, how they will all relate to a bedding area, a water hole, food plot, bedding point, morning stands, evening stands, and then we get to take a tour around the majority of the property too. Bottom line is $350 per person times 50 people. We highly encourage you to bring your kids. After all, it's Father's Day. 50, those 50 spots always sell out very fast. On that same day, it's from 10 o'clock to four o'clock in the afternoon. We have speaking events. All my sponsors kick in for that. So we'll literally be giving away a Matthews boat, a ghillie blind. And so one person will win each of those. So about 13, 14 people will win really good prizes. I could list them all, but check it out. We also have our $100 times 100 hunt raffle to a lucky hunter that'll come hunt with us the end of September for three nights. So really check out all that information. Look at the link in the description. You can ask Jesse, she'll help you out with any scheduling of that and uh, look forward to seeing you guys there. It's a great event. Every dime that's earned goes directly to Camp Kicking Bear and even a little extra on top of that. So. Look forward to seeing you there. We're literally gonna be spraying and planting switchgrass the end of May, then planting in early June. We could probably get away to mid-June around here. 
as long as we get some late June rain. And then once switchgrass establishes, it's very drought tolerant. Now, if we don't, every plant has its limits. So if we get 10 weeks of no rain, I'm sure it would drought out, but then we have a lot of other concerns around here too, besides just switchgrass. The bottom line is, get that switchgrass here, just get some timely rains every couple weeks once it's established, and you're gonna be on your way to a great switchgrass field, and it's planted a lot later than you might think. So there's still time. If you have areas of food plots, you have areas that have a food plot edge that you wanna establish uh, switchgrass, you chemically controlled it last year, get a spraying of 2,4-D, one pint per acre, and two quarts per acre of glyphosate in that location. Maybe at areas you sprayed out for food plots initially this spring. Another spraying here soon, and you still have time to get that switchgrass on there. So look for old farm field edges that you want to take back from the farmer and actually plant wildlife plantings. Look for areas in your food plots where you can plant. Look for areas that you've sprayed for food plots early in this spring or were chemically controlled last year. Maybe areas that you'd already previously worked up. Now you're what you're setting the weeds back. You're waiting for them to come in. Hit them with 2,4-D and round up. So those are a lot of scenarios if you use soft seed where you can actually establish switchgrass into June and maybe even closer to July. But after you get to July 1st, end of June, you're starting to get really late and, uh, and then you have a good catch. So the next step, after you establish this, we're gonna be looking in mid to late July, early August, and we're gonna look for weed competition coming in with that switch. Because again, the weeds are always coming back. So that's a great time when your weeds, wait for your weeds to get 10, 12 inches high. Let's say your switchgrass is seven or eight inches high by that point. Then you're gonna mow down to your switchgrass. And what I mean by that, even if you cut into the switchgrass by two or three inches, it doesn't really matter. You're just trying to get sunlight onto your switchgrass. After you mow, it's pretty crazy how you come back in August, two weeks later, and all your switchgrass is now above the weeds because it's hitting that exponential growth phase where it's keeping pace over the weeds. That's what I'm looking at doing this year. We're getting those sprays on, we're planting late, we're getting them mowing. Next year, I'll hit this strip with simazine in the, in the spring before spring green up. It's a pre-emergent three quarts per acre. And then I'll look at, okay, what do we need to do? If I have goldenrod coming in here, if I have briars coming up, if I have any woody shoots for some, from some aspen nearby, we've had it all, you know, depending where it's at on the property, then I'm gonna mow around this time of year. In fact, we're mowing switchgrass today in other areas. That'll get that switchgrass to be above the weed line again, let it take off. Switchgrass, when it germinates, it germinates about the same time as corn, so that that seed first germinates. But when it emerges the, the second year, it emerges at about spring green up, but a little bit later, it seems like, than most other plants or weeds. So that means you come in here and mow it. Now everything's at an even start, and that switchgrass outpaces everything. If you have stubborn weeds, maybe some pigweed in there, but especially some foxtail, quinclorate can be sprayed to get rid of your foxtail. In that first year, so the second season of growth, you can spray 4.5 to six ounces per acre. Very critical that you don't do that over that. So you have to calibrate your sprayer, understand how much it sprays per acre. Doesn't matter if it's 10 gallons or 18 gallons, that's how much chemical you add per acre. Don't look at ounces per gallon thing and then go fill it up because then if you double spray this, you're gonna kill your switchgrass. So very important to understand how to calibrate your sprayer. We have videos for that. You can just search, search for that. And then once you get that established, quinchloric might help get rid of that foxtail, repeated mowing, simazine in the spring, and you'll be set after a couple of years to just let it go. You have to baby it for a little bit, but it'll pay back big time. And it's not a real big, uh, real big guessing game. If you see weeds taking over, you can mow it. If you have problem foxtail, you can learn what that is. It's got an oval stem with hair on it, a little bit reddish purple. Similar to, to switchgrass, switchgrass is perfectly round. You step on foxtail, it lays flat. You step on switchgrass, it pops back up. So there's some differences for sure. But bottom line is you take care of it, get it established correctly. Not only will it take you take care of you for decades to come, but it'll grow really well that first year and you can plant it a lot later than you might've otherwise thought. Now, I don't know if you've checked out our main website lately, whitetailhabitatsolutions.com, but we've really had a lot going on, including hats, books, our web class, and certainly our new seed company, WHS Wildlife Blends. When you click on seed on our site, it'll take you right to our brand new site 
for the seed company. We have all 12 blends available. So check it all out though. I encourage you, I appreciate you checking it out. Whether you buy anything or not, really appreciate you visiting the site and uh, seeing what's going on and continue to watch because we have big things coming later this year.